Chapter 5. God loves a prosperous man. Our chief reason for claiming that God loves a prosperous man is that it is only as we experience good that God is expressed through us. The more completely we realize God in all its manifold expressions, health, wealth, and happiness, the more completely do we express God. That is, the more does God become personified through us. So, God could have no knowledge of or love for the man who does not express abundance. This is a little hard to take, but if God could know anything of lack or limitation of any kind, lack of money, lack of health, lack of intelligence, lack of friends, then lack would become an internal verity, for God is changeless. What he knows today, he has always known and will know throughout eternity. But God is always one, not a house divided against itself, and he can never know anything unlike himself. So we need not be concerned about lack ever becoming a, re a reality. Where does all the money come from? Is a question often asked of a minister friend of mine. You have so much more than other men in your profession. You have a beautiful home, oriental rugs, and luxurious furniture. You have the latest and most expensive automobiles. You wear the most expensive clothes. Your church is flourishing and you never beg. You give generously to others, people often say to him. Listen to his reply. The law of attraction is the reason for supply. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Within the law of the kingdom is included in the law of supply. I do not look for salary checks, honorariums, alms, or handouts for my supply. I look to the formless substance of God, the same substance that awaits every man who will recognize it and use it, and to the Christ within who possess all things. It took me years to get this understanding, says my friend, and until I had it, I never got anywhere with my finances. Like other men in my profession, mine was a hand-to-mouth experience, always in fear, always in debt, always in doubt. There is no reason why every minister of the gospel should not be as prosperous as the most affluent member of his congregation. It is just a matter of taking God at his word and proving him. It is one thing to lecture and preach about the bounty of opulence of God and quite another to activate it in one's life. This man was not rich to begin with, but he conditioned him, his mind to receive divine gifts. He knew that if the law was going to do anything for him, it would have to do it through him. What did Jesus mean when he said the cattle on a thousand hills are mine? Was he talking specifically about livestock, cows, horses, and sheep? No, he was talking about everything in God's kingdom. The expression, the cattle on a thousand hills, symbolizes everything on the material plane. Money, houses, lands, jobs, food, clothing, automobiles, everything. These things are yours. They are mine. Christ told the disciples, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God gave the cattle on a thousand hills to us and expects us to take them on his own terms. What are God's terms? The terms of faith, recognition, and acceptance. If I were in hunger, I would slay and eat. The gifts of the Father are not ours until we recognize and accept them. When we recognize and accept them, we can have them. We can, as the scripture says, slay and eat. But wait a minute. This is the point at which most people run into a snag. They go through all the metaphysical formulas and processes. They affirm God's abundance and the fulfillment of desires. Then they beg and beseech God for that which is already theirs. We do more things to keep our prosperity away from us than we do to attract it to us, says Retta C. Chilcott. If we did not, we should demonstrate more prosperity, for it is really more difficult to keep the good away than to attract it. But almost constantly, we do things to put it out of our minds. We close our minds to prosperity. That is the reason why we are not prosperous. We pray for prosperity, then we tell ourselves that it is impossible to be prosperous. I know of no one who does not at times say, I cannot afford this or that. It is not a good idea to say such things. If we recognize ourselves to be children of God, we can afford anything we desire. We are limiting ourselves when we say that we cannot afford a thing. We do not limit God. We cannot do that, but we limit our consciousness. Shut it up so that we cannot receive our supply. I always think of it in this way. I set in action the cause in the unmanifest, and then I bring prosperity into manifestation. Now, hold that for a moment while we define the unmanifest. The unmanifest is the cause side of everything. It is the Christ within who possesses all things. If there is nothing but God and we are one with him and he gives himself to us freely and he is everything, then all things are ours. The first step in demonstrating an abundant supply is to know that you are one with God and that consequently all things are yours. Yes, everything, money, freedom, 
happiness, peace, health, wealth, and abundance more than you can ever ask or think. What is your situation right now? Are you expressing debt instead of plenty? Then something is wrong. You may, Miss Chilcott continues, be pulling at the wrong end of the purse string. Remember, you have hold of only one end of that string. If you have hold of the manifest end, you have hold of the wrong end. You must hold on to the cause end, and that is yourself, your consciousness. You control it absolutely. You control your finances, whether you think you do or not. You control the amount that you get. It is absolutely up to you. Let's get rid of the idea that we are victims of circumstances. Poverty is not variety, but an idea of lack operating in our minds. It is our failure to comprehend and understand God. Since there is no lack in God, poverty can be changed. If we had a perfect consciousness of allness of God, we would automatically express prosperity in every department in our lives. The cattle on a thousand hills are mine. The cattle on a thousand hills are mine. The earth is the Lord's and the fulfillment thereof. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. It is not a far off God who says these things to you. It is your own inner Christ who possesses all things. The cattle on a thousand hills are yours in the same way that the music that fills your house is yours. How do you take possession of the music and make it audible? By tuning into it. The tuning in can be accomplished anywhere at any time and under any circumstances. So the man who recognizes God's substance and provides the proper pattern for its manifestation will know the truth of the statement. All things that the father have are mine. He will slay and eat. He will see opportunities, success, happiness, and supply flowing into him from every side. How did Solomon become the richest man of his time? He developed the rich ideas that God had given him. Solomon was told that he could ask God for anything he desired. He could have asked for great wealth, power, or influence, but he chose wisdom of rich ideas. His wealth came with him through the Queen of Sheba, the Queen of Tyre, and others who sought his help. Known as a man of great wisdom, he found riches flowing to him from every side. The metaphysician insists that rich ideas are the first requisite in demonstrating prosperity. If we recognize our spiritual inheritance and act with the law, no good thing will be withheld from us. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed. We all want an enduring and irrevocable prosperity. This kind of prosperity comes only through wisdom and understanding. It is not enough to affirm the truth. Our understanding must carry with it an acceptance and a conviction. J. Lowry Fendrich Jr. says, We cannot live by the law by knowing it. We live the law by living it, and living it so profoundly as to be unable to escape a conviction of its internal operation. We activate prosperity in the same way that we activate health and power, and that is by the law of consciousness. Faith is the power of conviction. It is the power to know, to create, to formulate, and to achieve. The law of the Lord is perfect. How can we account for so many failures? In so many ways, that we have account for so many successes. Both represent subjective trends in our thought. When a man admits that he is a failure, he must also admit that he is the maker of failure. Since there is no failure in the divine plan, failure is always self-made. The universe is overflowing with abundance, but each man must fulfill his own destiny. Emerson said, men suffer all their life long under the foolish superstition that they can be cheated. But it is impossible for a man to be cheated by anyone but himself as for a thing to be and not to be at the same time. When the impediment which is now obstructing the flow of your prosperity is removed, there is an onrush of blessings which nothing can resist, someone has said. The belief that others are cheating you constitutes a psychic block that inhibits any action of the law of prosperity. Right now, you are in the midst of a great reservoir of spiritual substance from which all things are made. It is a subject to and responsive to your word. In him we live and move and have our being. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. What are you going to make out of this substance? Yes, I am talking to you, you who are having such a difficult time financially. What kind of measures are you going to hold up to the reservoir of all substance? How much are you going to take away? What kinds of demands are you going to make upon it? How big is your mental equivalent? How comprehensive is your consciousness? The reason God loves a prosperous man is because he manifests good in all its manifold expressions. How can you activate this substance and express abundance? How can you bring it into experience? There is but one way. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him. Do you hear? Did you notice the if? It has to do with opening the door. It has to do with your conscious volume action. If any man open the door, 
When you open it, do you know how to set the law in motion? You can open the door through your awareness that God cannot know lack or poverty of any kind. The force that activates substance is subconscious of the allness of good. If you try to claim the cattle on a thousand hills from the manifest side of life, you are likely to get into trouble with the police. To gain legal possession of them, you must appropriate them from the unmanifest side of life through the realization that we are surrounded by the substance that receives the impress of our word and acts upon it creatively. The people most troubled by finances are the people who worship the dollar rather than the power behind it. They are idolaters, so to speak, because they worship the coin instead of the source from which it springs. Our government adopted the inscription in God we trust for our money to remind us that God is the cause and supporting principle of all form. Think what it would do to our supply if every time we received or paid out money, we made an affirmation in God we trust. What a change in our affairs it would make. Now hold these four words for a few minutes. Say them over to yourself in God we trust. In God we trust. What does the affirmation do to you? It takes all responsibility and demonstration from your shoulders. It puts God first in your finances. It connects you with the source. Did you ever go to a mint and see how easily money is made? It is made just as automobiles, refrigerators, radios, clothing, and vacuum cleaners are made. Money is a symbol, an outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual substance. That is why we seek the cause. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Do not look for that which is already yours. Release what you already possess into manifestation. The cause is within you. In God we trust. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. If you are working in the unmanifest, you can be prepared for many surprises. With God, all things are possible. He will use any and all channels to bring your good to you. Nothing can hinder or impede its action. The dictionary defines trust as a reliance or practical resting of the mind on the integrity, veracity, justice, or the other sound principle of another person or upon his friendship or upon his promises as involving these faith all right. St. Paul has defined faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Do you understand the definition? It means that you must step out unto your promises of God and dare to make your claim. Dare to claim his wealth and prosperity. Dare to penetrate appearances and acknowledge him as your needed supply. Dare to trust him and to learn on him through thick and thin. You are told to keep your thoughts above the symbol at all times because every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadows of turning instead of thinking of currency stocks mortgages and bonds let us think in god we trust instead of thinking i can't afford it or i am broke let us think in god we trust faith is both substance and evidence both cause and effect meditation the cattle on a thousand hills are mine the world is mine the universe is mine for I am the child of God, free from all bondage. I am free. I am rich. I am powerful. I am one with good and everything is mine to use. I claim my highest good now and nothing can keep it from me.